I'm sure you've been bombarded by Verizon's banner ads for the new Rule the Air ad campaign. Since I have to look at them all the time, I figured I'd analyze the ads to find out exactly what am I looking at. As usual, it turns out to be more sinister than what I would expect. I'll start with a brand new banner ad that I saw for the first time about three days ago. This background is supposed to be like the structure of a snowflake. So first we have to understand the image has been manipulated. This image is mirrored or book matched along these lines of symmetry. In these two strategic places, above the logo and directly below the copy, we can find what appear to be a devil. I asked my two-year-old what he thought it was a picture of. Matthew, what is this a picture of? Monster head. What is it? Monster head. Monster head? Yeah. Okay. The base of a snowflake is usually a hexagon. This is the structure of a snowflake, not this. There are several book-matched marble monster faces in a Toronto cathedral documented in Rape of the Soul that are similar to the Verizon background. This appears to be two winged serpents joined at the hands. The winged serpent, called Lilith by Lester Crowley, is an occultic symbol who murders infants according to lore. In modern Luciferianism, Lilith is considered a consort of Lucifer and is identified with Mystery Babylon, the harlot. According to Wikipedia, when she and Lucifer mate, they form the androgynous being Baphomet. Notice the ellipse, often a symbol of the female, and the devil again is perfectly positioned above the girl's head. But it gets worse. The devil is the capstone to a pyramid, with his hands raised as if to say, Behold my new world order. Common Illuminati and Freemason symbolism, but this example is more honest than the Great Seal. When this animated ad comes to rest, notice the winged serpents are now holding up a symbol of the earth, and the top of the tower fits perfectly as the capstone to the pyramid. The cell waves double as the rays of light. We might want to ask, who is ruling the air? Considering that Ephesians 2.2 says that Satan is the prince of the power of the air, or ruler of the air. The globe can also be seen as an eye, like the CBS logo, even further reinforcing the all-seeing eye symbolism. What I am 100% sure of is that in an ad campaign that must be well in the hundreds of millions of dollars, there's no way the devil face would have been missed. It's a small graphic. These people are trained professionals, not a bunch of brainless chimps. You can go on thinking that it's a coincidence, but according to Freud, that's just your ego rationalizing or repressing information it can't handle. Moving on to the next ads, also note the signal circle around many of the characters' heads which they seem to have borrowed from Mad Men. It was that show's only reference to subliminal messages. The viewer was supposed to notice as a Catholic reference to the halo. Here's an example. No, no, that's not right. In the next ad we have a sex in bed. They mailed this ad to me. First, an easy to see scary skull. You may also be able to see the top of this skinny skeleton's body.
a ghoul or horror face. A horned devil peeking out from the phone. A sex. Another sex. And finally, a witch, whose mouth and hat are easy to see. Here are some more sexes and devils. If you think that this is some type of conspiracy theory of a religious fanatic, you should know that this is based on the psychoanalytic theories of Freud, namely the life and death drives. Besides, it doesn't matter if you think it doesn't work, it only matters that they think it does. Over 500 scientific studies confirm the impact of subliminal stimuli. One is out this week. Google could anger make people want things more. This looks like an old man. If you're interested in knowing how Freud's theories were picked up and used by the advertising industry to subconsciously manipulate us, Check out the BBC documentary, The Century of Self, that can be found on YouTube.